Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Swiss watch company ARC GMT. Now this colorway is the gray-blue colorway. There are six other, well, six total colorways, of which this is one. The uh, website is swcusa.com. I'll leave a link in the description to this watch here. Uh, price is $250. Now, before we talk about the other colorways, let's talk about uh, one um, issue with this watch. Not an issue for my wrist, but if your wrist is above seven and a half inches, this strap will not work for you. So if you want to purchase this watch, you can uh, send them an email or call them and uh, tell them your wrist is larger than seven and a half inches. And they'll substitute this strap for a nylon strap. Which is kind of a shame because this is a nice strap. It's uh, rubber backed and then has the leather on the top here. I'm not a leather expert, but it feels like it could be suede. Uh, this strap is very comfortable on wrist. It's uh, kind of similar to the Hirsch Robbie strap. And it does have the quick release pins here, which is nice because it does not have uh, drilled lugs. I would like to see drilled lugs on this watch. Uh, any watch that comes on a strap like this, I would like to see drilled lugs. But other than that, this watch has been great on wrist here. So the other colors are uh, black dial, maroon, um, let's see, sage gray. So that's uh, it comes with the green strap, a little bit different color of a gray dial. Sea glass, which looks like um, the Tiffany blue, turquoise, whatever you want to call it gray blue which is this one and then a midnight blue uh, this watch was sent over by swc if i were to purchase the watch myself i would probably go with that midnight blue i think that looks very nice so let's zoom in here take a close look at the dial so this does have sapphire crystal it is a flat sapphire crystal and there are 16 layers of ar coat ar coating applied to the top of the crystal and then on top of all of those uh, AR coats, there is a uh, sapphire coating, which I'm really not sure how that works, but um, that's what it says on the website. So there is a sapphire coating applied on top of those 16 layers of the anti-reflective coating on top of this flat sapphire crystal. Let's see if I can get it, uh, the studio lights here, maybe you can get a sense of that AR coating. Or maybe not. So you can't see the AR coating. That must be good AR coating. You can kind of see it there. But I've not had any issues telling the time on this, even though the dial is kind of a closer color to the indices. I prefer more contrast, uh, you know, white on black or black on white. But this is a cool looking watch. The, the blue, not necessarily my, my style, but, um, you know, I like the combination of this, so... It's nice that they have different color options. Oh, also another cool thing about this dial, I'm not sure if you noticed, but it, the dial is uh, curved. It has a convex shape to it. Hopefully you can see that here. Uh, so it's like a, a bowl shape, I should say, and they've done that to eliminate shadows on the dial. And the indices are painted and they've applied a 0 0.4 millimeter thick layer of BGW9 to the indices and the hands. So I'm sure the loom is going to be amazing on this. The loom was amazing on, or is amazing on their titanium arc. Uh, it does not have the GMT cut out there, but uh, that's, that's a very, very nice watch as well. That's titanium with the hardness coating. Um, speaking of that, this watch also does have a hardness coating applied. This is stainless steel. You can see here a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces. Now it's a little bit smaller of a watch. It's a 38 millimeter watch, but uh, great for my wrist size. And uh, I just briefly touched on it, but this is the GMT version here. And you can see a cutout there below the uh, handset, just above the six. And that is the GMT time. If I pull the crown all the way out, we'll advance the time to, oops. I'm doing the wrong thing here. I'm in the GMT function right now. So let's put that back to 10. So yeah, first uh, 
crown position doesn't do anything. Um, it's not hand windable because it's battery powered. Wait, let me set that back to 10 right there. Pull the crown all the way out. Now we can adjust the time. So there you can see that GNT window uh, rotating, which is what I meant to show you. So there we go. Uh, the hands are kind of sword uh, slash syringe hands. Then you can see the SWC logo right there below the 12 o'clock. Kind of reminds me of the um, a certain cartoon company. I don't know why. Like maybe it was Hanna Barbera or something like that. That's what that logo always reminds me of when I see that. The the old cartoons from the 60s, I believe. But uh, anyway, it's kind of a neat logo. And then down there at six o'clock again, you can see where it says Swiss Made. Yeah, so push pull crown, and it's good for 10 ATM or 100 meters of water resistance. Uh, there's the case back, Swiss Made stainless steel, 10 ATM, and then sapphire crystal. The Swiss watch company. Even the font, that kind of reminds me of like the 1960s cartoons. But anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. And then there's a closer look of the uh, at the rubber strap here. Again, very comfortable on rest as it should be. Uh, very lightweight as well, 59 grams. Uh, I think it's a great watch all around. 250 bucks. Not too bad. So this has a Swiss Ronda 515.24 quartz movement. And that's good for 38 months of battery life. I was going to say 38 hours power reserve, but 38 months of battery life. I'm uh, more of a mechanical guy versus quartz. But uh, yeah, that's just over three years of battery. So not too much to complain about there. Uh, the crown, something else interesting is that it has three O-rings in there. So that will help with the water resistance. Again, this is 316 ounce stainless steel with a hardened coating, and uh, that coating gets this up to about a thousand on the Vicker scale. So that's um, about five times harder than just regular 316 ounce stainless steel, which is around 200 on the Vicker scale. So the dimensions of this watch: 45.5 lug to lug, 38 millimeter watch diameter, 9.2 millimeter thick. 20 millimeter lug width and this strap does taper from 20 down to 18 and as I mentioned already this watch weighs in at 59 grams so uh, really lightweight I don't remember what the titanium version weighs probably somewhere around 40 I would guess and that had this real nice um, it was a uh, velcro nylon strap so this one's a little nicer looking than that one but uh, both of those, this strap and that strap is very comfortable. So let's take a look at the buckle here, and then I'll get it on wrist. Now instead of just having a straight across buckle, they have this little um, kind of ornamentation on here. And uh, there's that logo again. Yeah, looks like a nice buckle and tang. The tang is uh, stamped. No big deal, it works like it should. So anyway, let me get this on wrist, and then we'll see how it looks on my wrist. Uh, let me zoom out, back out again. So I'll show you where I'm at on the strap. You can probably see the crease that was on here. So I have a six and a half inch wrist. And um, when I put this on the first time, I was thinking, yeah, this strap might be a little short for some folks. And then I went to their website, and uh, they have a... Uh, disclaimer on there stating that if your wrist is above seven and a half uh, reach out to them and they'll get you a different strap so I don't think you get that in addition to this one or how that works exactly but I don't really know how many folks with uh, seven and a half inch or larger wrists will purchase this watch anyway for my six and a half inch wrist I think it looks great uh, it wears great again the straps very comfortable Looks like I might have just tightened it more than I've been wearing it, usually. Yeah, I think I did. But anyway, you can uh, see where it is there on my wrist. Six and a half inch circumference, uh, 52 millimeter wristband. And uh, lug to lug on this is 45.5. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it, and it really does help me out. 
And uh, once again, thanks to SWC for sending this over for us to check out. You know what, let me show this side by side with my SKX and then we'll uh, check out the loom in just a moment here. But yeah, I like I like this strap because your um, you know your wrist will sweat obviously in the summertime or whenever, and then uh, it won't affect the suede so much because the rubber is uh, protecting the, the suede strap, and you have some airflow here. So, a very slick idea. All right, let's give my SKX a shake, get that second hand moving, and uh, here's a look at the size. So this is a 42 millimeter watch, uh, the cases, and then actually lug to lug is pretty close, 46 to the 45 and a half. But that arc doesn't really look all that small compared to the SKX. I would uh, say that's just because of how large the dial is on this. Actually, the dial is probably larger than, a little bit larger than the SKX dial. All right, let's uh, check out the loom here. Very curious to see how this will compare. Well, I thought that the arc would be a bit brighter than the SKX, but it's not quite as bright, but it's definitely not lacking for loom. I think the loom on this watch is uh, very well done. Considering it's not a dive watch, it's more of a field watch. So yeah, the hands and the indices is perfectly legible here in the with, in the studio without the lights on. I think the BGW9 is is um, it's not quite as bright, but it's supposed to be longer lasting. So very well done here. Um, definitely not going to hold the watch back um, with this loom. So that will conclude this video. As always, thank you for your time and thank you for watching.